Okay, today we're going to go over properties of quadrilaterals. We have two quadrilaterals here. The quadrilateral is just a four-sided shape. Okay. One of the first rules we want to define is the interior angles of a quadrilateral. That's right. The interior angles of any quadrilateral are going to add up to 360 degrees. Oh, that's a funny piece. It's dragging. It's supposed to be a plus, but the mouse is dragging. That's okay. So, I could just go slow. With that being said, what that means is if we have any three angles, we can always find the fourth one out by adding the three together. Okay. And then subtracting from 360 degrees. Okay. It's a pretty simple idea, very similar to our triangle rule where all the interior angles of a triangle add it up to 180 degrees. Okay. So, from here what we're going to do is there's a couple other rules we need to talk about. And they deal with the midpoints of quadrilaterals. So we're going to choose some midpoints and do my best to estimate here. But this is the midpoint of our top line. And remember, the midpoint is where it cuts the length of the line in half. Okay. We're going to find the midpoint of our second line, roughly here. The midpoint of our third and midpoint of our fourth. If we connect all of the lines of the midpoints, we end up making parallel lines. So what we mean by that is these two lines here are parallel to each other, and these two lines here are parallel to each other. So we've created parallel lines along this. Now, keep in mind, now that we've split these at midpoints, Give me a sec. Here. So like we're saying, we'd split these. These are all midpoints. So in other, line, in other words, the length of these two lines are the same. The length of these two lines will be the same. These two. And finally, what color am I going to use? Red? These two. Because we split them at the midpoint, all of these lines, or these line segments you can call them, now have the same distance between them. And what we've created inside, if we have pairs of parallel sides, does anyone know what the shape is called? That's right, we've created a parallelogram, which is what we're going to talk about next. Okay. A parallelogram, there's a special rule of parallelograms, and it turns out that they're diagonals. And a diagonal means to go from one corner to the opposite corner. So in this case, that'd be A to D. And to go from C to B, you're right to make triangles, but they actually do something to each other. Okay? They bisect each other. What does it mean to bisect each other? To cut in half. So this point here cuts this line perfectly in half, and it also cuts this line perfectly in half, even though these lines are not the same distance across. Okay? So obviously this line C... See, yeah, C to B is a much longer line than A to D, but when the diagonals cross each other, they bisect each other, which is an important rule that we need to remember as we go through this. Okay? So, we can go through maybe an example from our quiz. We'll pull up a, t a question. So, we have a question here, and this is, looks rather complex. What is this shape that I'm about to highlight here? What... That didn't really work. Hold on. Nope. Usually it goes in a straight line. There we go. What shape would we call this? Uh, it's a trapezoid, or more importantly, I want you guys to recognize that it's a quadrilateral. So, in this question, what I want us to do is I want us to find all the interior angles of this quadrilateral. We know one of them. What is this one here? Yeah, it's 90. We know that one is 90. So. We're going to name all of these angles. We'll call this one A. This is the interior angle. B. This will be C. 
and this will be D. Okay. And we know from our rules that A plus B, C, and D. Sorry, it's dragging a little here, but it equals 360. Okay? Now we already know one of them. What is angle C? That's right. So we can already replace C with 90 degrees. Okay? We still got to find A, B, and D. This is where most of my information seems to be clustered around. So I'm going to work with what I have here and try to use some of our angle rules. First of all, this, if I were to start here and go all the way around, what angle would that be to go completely in a circle? Yeah, that's 360 degrees. So I know to go all the way around, this is 360 degrees. I also know from my opposite angle rules, okay, what would this angle here be? Does anyone know from the opposite angle rule? That's right. This is opposite of 60 degrees. Okay, these two are opposite. This is 60. What would this angle here be? 80. And we know opposite angles are always the same, correct? So let's take this information we have here. Okay, and I'm just going to call this... Uh, X and this X, because technically they're the same. And you know if we add this entire circle, or this rotation together, we know we're going to get 360 degrees. So I'm going to take 360 is equal to, and I'm going to put all of these values into an equation. So I'm going to take 60 and 80, so it's equal to 60 plus 80 okay, plus X. Plus 60 and 80 again. Okay. I'm probably going to run out of room here. Move this over. And plus x. So we've built an equation. So we got to go back to our, I think our chapter 3 rules. We need to collect our like terms. What are like terms here? 60, 80. 60, 80. That's right. These are all like terms. Okay? So let's work with this. What is 60 and 80? 140. And then what are two 140s? 280. Okay? So we have 360 degrees. These like terms add up to 280. And I also have like terms of x and x. What are they together? 2x. When we add them together, it becomes positive 2x. So I'm going to move my 280 to the other side because I want to isolate for x to figure out what that angle is because that's going to help us with this triangle over here. Okay? So we get 360 minus 280. When I move 280 over, it becomes a negative. 80. It is equal to 2x. What's 360 minus 280? 80. Great. 80 is equal to 2x. And how do we isolate x? That's right, when it comes over, it's divided by 2. So what is x in the end? Great. So, we've got a whole lot of information here now. We know that x is 40, and there are technically two of them, so I'm going to replace those x's. Actually, I'll leave them in, I'll write them beside it. We know that this is now 40 degrees, and this is 40 degrees. So we've solved the top part of this which is good, and that helps us because what we now have is I have two angles in a triangle. Can I find the third one? Yeah. Angle B? Yeah, how do I do that? We know all of these interior angles add up to what? 180. 180, okay. What do we have to do to find this angle B? Yeah, we subtract 60 and 40, and that's going to be equal to our angle B. So, what will that be? All right. So, B is 80 degrees. That's good. So, we now have two of the interior angles. Angle B is 80. I also have information about this triangle. This is 40 and this is 20. Can I figure out this one? We can figure out A because we know it is the exact same as our other scenario. We take 180, subtract 20. Subtract 40. 
and that will be equal to our angle A. Anyone know what that will give us? 120. Excellent. So instead of continuing this pattern all the way around, okay, I could technically figure out this triangle, figure out this triangle to get to this angle. I actually have three of the angles within this quadrilateral. Okay, uh, A was 120. We can figure out angle D because we know all together it will add up to 360. So we just need to manipulate this. Let's see if I have room. I'm going to try to squeeze it in here. Anyone know what it's going to be in this case? Okay. How did you figure out that it was 70? Okay, so 120 and 80 was 200 plus 90, 290. And we took 36 and subtracted that value. And you got 70. So angle D is 70 in this case. Okay. So that was a difficult question where we had to use all of our interior angle rules. Okay? Yeah.